<laughs> okay, so let's talk about 9-4. So 9-4, I've outlined for you, we're, we're going to talk about mathematical induction, which is a real fancy word for mathematical proof. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you might want to put here that we're really talking about a mathematical proof. Now, it's not as bad as you think it is. <laughs> and I've outlined here for you the steps that you need to take for um, the principles of mathematical induction. Now, one of these steps I skipped because I think it's kind of dumb, but you'll see it in your book, so I wanted to warn you about it. So are we all ready? So the first step says that you're going to let P sub N be a statement involving the positive integer N. Okay, well, that's just a bunch of gobbledygook. If we're going to look at this down here. So we have a sum, right? Sum of I don't know how many numbers. So um, S sub N means I don't know how many terms there are in the sequence. But the sequence looks like this. 1, 3, 5, 7, and it goes on in that pattern infinitely. And then they have this 2N minus 1 talk about in a minute. And in this whole pattern, this whole sum, I mean, should equal n squared. So the pattern or the, the sum of that sequence is just n squared. Okay? So we're going to prove that that's true. So the first process, we have to prove the rule generates the first term given that n is 1. So you'll notice that in every sequence, n is 1. In other words, your first term in the sequence is 1. We're not going to start with the 0 term in that sequence. All right, so the first thing, write yourself a few notes. So note 1, mathematical induction. Consists of 2. distinct parts. Notice that I know I have three up there, but remember I told you I kind of ignore one of them. So two distinct parts. First, you must show the rule is true. when n equals 1 for the first term. I know that's a lot of writing, but you're going to really want that written there when you go back to do your homework, because you're going to get confused. So just keep rereading your notes. Make sure your notes are in front of you. Hopefully you're using different colors and a highlighter would be handy, especially for a certain part of this. Um, and I'm going to do it three different times. We're going to do a third one on the back. You'll see that it's a process that repeats. It doesn't change. So the very first thing I'm going to do is prove that 1 is equal to the first term. Okay? So are we ready to go? Everybody done ready? All right, so a sub n is equal to this whole sum... Should it, um, multiply to give you n squared. So if I have a sub 1, a sub 1, the value of it is 1, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to put the n squared there. So a sub 1, the value of that is 1, correct? And let's put a 1 here. So if the value of a sub 1 is 1, then I'm going to plug into n squared. What position does this have in the sequence? Is it the first position, the second position, the third position? It's the first, right? So we're going to take the fact that n is the position it is in the sequence, and we're going to square that. So what's 1 squared? So doesn't 1 equal 1? So does the first term match that in the sequence? Yeah. And you're thinking, well, 3 squared is not 
or I'm sorry, two squared, because that's the second term of the sequence. Two squared is not three. I'll show you how that works in a minute. I'll show you the next term in a minute. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so then this is true, right? That's what you're trying to prove. So you do have to show that part, because remember, you are proving something to me. So it's part of your proof. Then the second part, look at this. what the second thing says up here. It says, assume the rule works for any k. Um, and you're like, where did k come from? <laughs> do you see a k in the original problem here at all? Like, I see n's. Well, what your book does is they go and they swap out n's for k's. Is there really any reason to do that other than make a confusion to you? So I, I choose not to do that. So you can write that in here, that for right here, I don't care. I don't see a valuable reason for it, so I don't do it. So I don't care if you do this stuff or not. So you won't see me doing it right there. But if you wonder where the book comes up with a K, if you happen to read your textbook, some of you do that. That's what they're doing. They're swapping the M's for K's. Why not just write it with a K to begin with? Right? So then we're going to do step three. Can I move that? So step three says prove that the rule works for the next term, k plus 1. And so I've just told you in here, plug k plus 1 in for the next term and the answer. What does that look like? Let me just tell you, I want you to highlight this part from here all the way to the equal sign. So in between the two equal signs. That whole entire part has an equivalent value of n squared. Isn't that what it's saying? I'm giving you the sum. This is that last term of the sequence, 2n minus 1, but we're the last term. And that whole thing consists of n squared. Well, what if that's not the last term? It might not be the last term, right? So here's what we're going to do. Show, emphasis on show, that the rule works. for n plus 1. How is n plus 1 related to n? If you have n and then n plus 1, what does n plus 1 mean? Does it come before n or after n? It's the next one after n, right? So isn't that the next term of the sequence? If n is the first term, wouldn't n plus 1 be the next term? That's where I'm coming up with n plus 1. So we have to prove that the rule works for n plus 1 and so what I want you to write here is that you are going to plug n plus 1 in for every n, well nearly every n. So how do you start it? You always start with the original sequence. So the original sequence starts here from 1 and ends to 2n minus 1. So I'm just going to write, and you've got to write small, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus dot 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 plus 2n minus 1. That's the sequence, right? I want you to highlight that. And feel free to highlight it in your homework so that your brain is separated from everything else. So I have that part highlighted in between the equal signs, and then I'm going to highlight that on my paper. If this is the last term that they're showing in the sequence, what is the next term after that going to be? Plus what? If this is n, the next term after that would be n plus 1, right? So I'm going to take this little expression right here, and this is where I'm going to replace the n with n plus 1. So I've got plus, I'm going to use little brackets, 2 times, instead of n, I'm putting in n plus 1, and I still have a minus 1 in here, right? 
and then it equals, oops, I ran out of room, this equals, now we have this part on the right-hand side, right? The next term of the sequence instead of n squared is going to be what? Instead of n, what are you going to put? Replace with n, n plus 1, right? So instead of n squared, this is a squared, because I'm running out of room, so sorry, um, I'm going to put it in n plus 1. So I have exactly the same sequence as I started with before. Thank you, Sabrina. All I've done is add one thing into it. I've added right after this last number, I've added the next term of the sequence, which is this, right? And then instead of writing n squared, thank you. And then instead of writing n squared, I put the next term n plus 1 squared. Are you okay with that? You understand where I put and what I put. You might not understand why yet, but you understand where I got the things from. This is the last term in the sequence. Wouldn't this be the term after that? Let me tell you why. What if n is 5? Wouldn't you multiply 5 here? Mm -hmm. Times 2 minus 1. Well, wouldn't that one be 6 then? It should be. All right, so how does this work? The reason why I highlighted this is because originally, what does this whole thing equal? n squared. So we're going to replace all of this with n squared. So this gets replaced with n squared because that's where it came from. All of this highlighted, and that's why I highlighted it, will always equal n squared. So we always replace that original part of the sequence with what they tell you it equals, n squared. You cannot just start with that because you're doing a proof, so you can't skip steps. Then you're going to go ahead and do the math here. So I'm going to distribute the 2. So I get plus 2 times n is 2n. Uh, 2 times 1 is plus 2 minus 1 equals. And then I'm going to hold off on multiplying this out, but I have the n plus 1 squared, right? My whole goal is to show that um, the rule works for the next term. So all I have to do is prove that the left side equals the right side. Remember when we did the trig proofs? sine, cosine, and tangents, and some of you wanted to like get one side equal to zero, don't move things from left and right. Remember I talked to you about that? Don't physically add and subtract things from both sides. Just do stuff to both sides, like perform your math, but don't, terms should not move from side to side. So what I can do is I can either multiply this out, or I can combine like terms here and factor it so it looks like this. So I'm going to choose to hold off on this for a minute. Let's go ahead and collect like terms. So these can collect, and I've got n squared plus 2n plus 1 equals n plus 1 squared. Now here's where my choice occurs. I can factor this to see if it looks like that, or I can FOIL this. This does not multiply out to give me n squared plus 1, does it? Remember it has a middle term, it's n plus 1 times n plus 1. If I FOILed it, would it give me this? Yes. If I factored this, would it give me that? This is a perfect square trinomial. It does factor this way. So it's easier for me if I just factor, mostly because I like to factor. So this is what I'm really looking for. If you had chosen to foil it out, that's fine. You can do that too. But you're looking for the left side to equal the right side. So let's go back and look at the process before we do another one. So step one, we had to prove that um, the rule works for the first term. The value of my first term is 1. So a sub 1 is supposed to equal this. So here we go. Value of um, the, my position number is 1. The value of a sub 1 was 1. They just so happen to be the same. So it works there. 1 squared is 1. True. And I got over here, I wanted to show that the rule works for the next term, n plus 1. So you plug in n plus 1 everywhere you see an n, here and here. Well, not here, though. We had to plug in the next one, right? So we took all of this. We don't touch it. Don't even plug in for that n. So I rewrote all of that here. But I wrote the next term after this one here. That's where I plug in my n plus 1. So I plugged in my n plus 1 to show that that's the next term after this one. And then I plugged in my n plus 1 here in the general rule. And then all I have to do is replace this with what it equals, n squared, because that's what it equals there and then now do your math. So if you can get that process down and remember it, you'll be fine.
So we're going to apply that same thing to the next one. So a different rule. You ready? So step one. And we're not going to write everything. We're just going to write prove um, n equals 1 works. So we've got a sub 1 is equal to what's the rule? What am I using for my rule? This right here, correct? So n times n plus 1 over 2. What is the value of my first term? 1. So I am replacing a sub 1 with this value here. 1 equals, and then I'm replacing every 1, or I'm sorry, every n with the position a sub 1. So 1 has to go here. So do the math. Because it is a proof, don't skip. You can't just skip and go 1 equals 1. You're doing a proof. So do the math. 1 times 2 over 2. You can cancel out your 2's. And doesn't 1 equal 1. More is better. It's true. Right? So if I were you, I'd put a little check that worked. Ready? What's the next part? All right, so we're going to prove the rule works for n plus 1. So I'm going to use my handy dandy highlighter. Highlight the sequence. Now, this time we don't have f sub n equals, but if we did, wouldn't this part be in between the equal signs? So I'm going to repeat that part, write it exactly as it is. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 plus n. I'm going to do a plus. I'm going to highlight this part so my brain looks at it as being separate. So n is the final one in that sequence, correct? What's the next one after n? So we're going to replace n with n plus 1 equals. You always take the full sequence and take that last expression and replace the n in that last expression with n plus 1. This one's easier because it's just an n. The one that we did before had, what, 2n minus 1, so it's a little bit more complicated. But the right side is more complicated on this one, right? So we have to take this, and everywhere you see an n, you have to put an n plus 1. So I'm going to replace my first n with n plus 1. And then I'm going to replace my second n with n plus 1. But don't forget that you have an additional plus 1. All divided by 2. So everything that I did not highlight should have an n plus 1 replaced in it. Then what do I do? Yep, this highlighted part gets substituted by what? Yep, so I'm going to replace it with n times n plus 1 all over 2. Don't forget this, plus, and I'm going to, since this is a fraction, I'm going to take this n plus 1 and I'm going to put it over 1. Because I can't add it to this until I have like denominators, agree? Right? equals, I'm going to just leave this alone for right now, but I am going to add the, the 1's here. So I've got n plus 1 times actually an n, um, n plus 2 all over 2. I'm going to take the more complicated side, just like we did with the trig proofs, and make it more simplified. Wouldn't you agree that this is more complicated than this? If I were you, I would not multiply those out. Just leave it alone and keep bringing it down. This, however, I can deal with. I can't add these, though, until I have like denominators. What's my like denominator? Between 2 and 1? 2, right? 
So I have to multiply this by 2. That means I have to multiply this entire numerator by 2, not just the n, but also the 1. More is better. Do not, do not distribute. Now, actually, I still wouldn't distribute here. What I have is I have both of them underneath the same denominator, don't I? And before we do anything, notice that there's an n plus 1 here, isn't there? Use your algebra knowledge. I have a factor here of n, a factor here of n plus 1. Now that I have like denominators, I have a factor here of 2 and a factor here of n plus 1. Do they have any factors in common in n plus 1? So I'm going to factor out in n plus 1 out in front of parentheses. Okay? What's left over here when I take away an n plus 1? Just here. Just an n, right? What's left over here? Plus 2. Would you agree? All over 2 equals, oh, looky there, n plus 1 n plus 2, did we get it to work? That's what I'm looking for. Don't they check? Otherwise, this is what some of you would have done. You would have distributed the 2, right, and had 2n plus 2. You would have distributed the n and had n squared plus n. Since they're over the same denominator, you would have collected like terms, and you would have had a trinomial, wouldn't you? You would have then had to take that trinomial and factor it so it looked like that. Or foil this so it looked like that trinomial, right? Any of those three methods would be correct. But if you can use your algebra and take a shortcut, why not? Let's do one more. So flip it to the back. Let's see if you got it. So example three. Use mathematical induction. So this time you will be given S sub n is equal to 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus dot 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 plus n squared, wouldn't it be? Equals, and then the whole sum should equal n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6. So if you'd like, go ahead and try to do it on your own. I'll still yip yap up here and talk. Hopefully that won't disturb you. Your first step should be to prove that n equals 1 works. We'll stop for a minute and tell you that remember the value of a sub 1 is 1 squared. But n is the position that 1 squared is in the sequence, which is 1. So I'm replacing n with 1.
Does anybody have any questions yet? And if I were you, I would uh, change the more complicated and the simple. This is actually simpler than this. So I'm going to do it like we did on the one previously and find the least common denominator, which in this case would be 6. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by 6. And I'm going to incorporate that thing that we talked about with the last one. So use each situation as a new learning tool. Rather than multiply everything out, which would be a bit of a nightmare, I'd rather leave it factored. So if I've got to have something factored, look at this. These are all three factors, and I've got a 6 as a factor, and I've got 2n plus 1s. Do these have any factors in common? This one and this one. They have an n plus 1 in common, don't they? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to factor an n plus 1 out in front. Out in front of parentheses. So if I take an n plus 1 out of here, I'm left with an n times... 2n plus 1. If I factor out an n plus 1 out of here, I'm left with a plus 6 times 1n plus 1 left over. In parentheses. All over 6. So I almost have it looking like this. And again, let me remind you, you can't leave one side off and leave it blank and keep going will lose points for being lazy. So then if I were you, I would distribute and start doing the math from here. It didn't work when you did that, did it? Okay. So we'll have to do it the old fashioned way. We'll have to break the part. Good thing for fraction tape. Well, see, how many mistakes is that? That's probably a mistake. I'm adjusting. I'm thinking as I go. It doesn't count. <laughs> so I have 2n squared plus 7n plus 6 all over 6. Hmm. 
Now, if I were you, I would be totally okay with going off to the side and factoring this off to the side. So remember, this is the harder factoring, and it should factor like this. And quite honestly, if I were you, you're looking at these two, right? And you want to see, does it make this? You could choose to multiply these two out and make it look like this, right? And have n plus 1, and then this, and then have n plus 1, and then whatever that multiplies out. But couldn't I just foil this in my head? What's n times 2n? 2n squared. What's n times 3? 3n. What's 2 times 2n? 4n. What's a 3n and a 4n? Oh, there it is, right? And then what's 2 times 3? It works, doesn't it? Can't I just go, okay, I foiled that it works. Do I have to factor by the long way? No, use your brain. All right, so we've got n plus 1 times. No. I think we're in pre -cop. We're Right? We, we can use our shortcut. I mean, we're trying to prove it, so we foiled it. Okay, good. So then I've got n plus 2. Because you want them in the same order. And then 2n plus 3. All over 6 equals the same thing. Now, I've finished it. We could do what? You could still show it, yes. Any other questions on that? That was harder, right?